Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to University Lutheran Church. Uh, I'm Josh Kessner. I'm the campus pastor here at University Lutheran. Pastor John Heiliger, the parish pastor, will be preaching later on. And happy Palm Sunday to all of us. Uh, hopefully you grabbed a palm on the way in and have these in your hands. Uh, if not, then they're just out there. And we've got a chance to gather at the back to start back there for the processional. Uh, but we wanted to do the announcements in here first. Um, so in just a minute, I'll invite any of you that want to can come and start either uh, just outside in the courtyard, it's a little chilly, or just in the narthex there. Um, but thanks for that. And so thanks for all these palms. And thanks to Jim and Annette for bringing these real palms. Not that the ones in your hands aren't real. Um, <laughs> but these real uh, palms from the coast uh, that are up here. So check these out on your way up to communion too. Uh, just adding a lot of beauty into the sanctuary today. Palm Sunday is a, a sort of a, a glorious day that we talk about. Um, and at the end of Lent, we, we say that Jesus is king. And, and then at the end of the week, uh, there's a different story going on. Um, but today we'll, we'll read these Gospels about Jesus processing into Jerusalem during the last week of his life uh, and then continue to meditate on that throughout the week and what has in store for us. Speaking of this week, it is Holy Week, and so we will uh, gather for Easter next Sunday. But before then, there will be services Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary, Good Friday at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary, uh, and then on Easter Sunday, well, if for anyone that likes to rise early, there'll be an Easter sunrise service at the Sanders Farm. We've done that before. Um, it's a little chilly, and 6.45, I think, is <laughs> when the sun, right before the sun rises. It's a little early, but that's out there at Abundant Blessings Farm. And then here in the sanctuary at 9 and 11 a.m. All of that, you don't have to memorize it, because it'll be in the e email this week, uh, and you can find it in a lot of different places online. Um, so we'll continue to broadcast that. But it's a busy week here at University Lutheran. Some announcements for this week. Uh, Abby Harris, little Abby Harris, Kathy Harris's daughter, is having surgery this week on the 13th, I believe. Pastor John can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so we'll be praying for her in the prayers here today. You'll notice Abby in the prayers. Uh, and then also something that is happening today on campus in the new chapel. So if you haven't been out there, this is an opportunity to go check it out. But Jim Dant, a pastor, I think he's a Baptist pastor from the Greenville area in the upstate. Um, we've used this book, This I Know. It's a tiny little book. We've used it about our conversations about welcoming, uh, being a welcoming church in the past year or so. But he's going to be a guest preacher or a speaker on campus at the chapel. They say the event is 4 to 6, but I, I believe he'll start at about 4, 4.30 or so. So if you'd like to, go check him out. I know Pastor John and I will be there, maybe a couple of students too. Um, but Jim Dant is speaking on campus at the chapel. Uh, it's a long walk from here, but you're welcome to park at church. <laughs> and then I think there's also parking over there, but be careful on campus where you park. Um, I'm not sure what it's like on a Sunday. That's today at 4 p.m. That's a lot of announcements. Is there anything else for the good of the congregation today? Then I invite you all to stand if you'd like to and gather in the narthex back here uh, for this processional part of Palm Sunday. <laughs> And if not, I'll keep my mic on if you'd like to stay in the sanctuary, too. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. This is the gospel, one of the gospels for today from the Saint Luke. After he had said this, Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethpage in Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. 
As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. And he answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Sovereign Jesus, bless these branches as well as those who bear them. As we march with Jesus this day, may these branches remind us of the journey he made during Holy Week, where suffering and death led to resurrection and new life. May we submit to his gracious leadership over our lives and follow his example of humility, servanthood, and sacrifice. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. As we process singing this hymn, carefully singing and reading while you're walking through, uh, I invite you to wave your palms up and down or just lift them as high as you can. Probably see if you can lift them higher than me. But we'll sing this processional hymn together.
Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. May the grace of God through Christ, our salvation, be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and who suffered death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated for this anthem before the readings. Thank you. First reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint and know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. All of them will wear out like a garment 
the moth will eat them up. The word of the Lord. Amen. Our song will be sung responsibly and led by our cantor. second reading is from Philippians, second chapter, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. As Jesus came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you, even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts around you and surround you and hem you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave within you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. Then he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling things there. And he said, it is written, my house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching in the temple. The chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people kept looking for a way to kill him but they did not find anything they could do, for all the people were spellbound by what they heard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. I invite any children to come forward they'd like. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. What day is it? How did you know that? 
Yes. This is great. These are beautiful poems that Jim and Annette Godsey brought back, sharing their gifts for nature and love of decorating. We processed in with the palm. Bless you. We processed in with palms, and these palms are for you to take home and to keep with you. Miss Myrna in the back, who does our audiovisual team, has a special place in her house where she puts her palm frond and looks at it all year long till next Ash Wednesday, and then she puts it in her garden. I have one to keep all year long down in my office as well. So I'd love for you to take yours and do something special with it, whatever you'd like to do. So on this Palm Sunday, who can tell me what happened in Jesus' life? Do you know what happened on Palm Sunday? You, that he prayed, he prayed over the city of Jerusalem, that's right. And um, let's see, if he rode on a donkey through the crowd. And you know why that was special? Any ideas why that might be special? That's all right, sometimes I do that. Sometimes I do that right up there. <laughs> yeah, it was special because in the First Testament, the Old Testament, in the prophet Zechariah, it said your king will come riding on a donkey. So Jesus, if, um, let's see, if you're the city of Jerusalem over there, I'm over here, this is the Mount of Olives, so Jesus is over here on the Mount of Olives with his disciples, they ride down across the Kidron Valley, come up to the gates leading into Jerusalem. And that was the path. And they were waving these palm branches and saying, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And they would throw these down. Yes? Yeah, it was a special procession or a special parade for a king. And so they'd be waving their palm fronds, they put them on the ground, they took their cloaks off, spread them on the ground so the donkey wouldn't even have to touch the ground. So this is a big, big deal that goes on on Palm Sunday. And this is what we're celebrating this day. So let us pray. And you can pray after me if you'd like. Dear God, Dear God thanks for this special day. Thanks for this special day. Thanks for those who have taught us this story. And the story we will share with others. And the story we will share with others. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. We'll continue with our hymn of the day.
peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, Holy Week begins today with Palm Sunday, or in some congregations, Passion Sunday, going much further into this week's coming events, recalling the final days of Jesus' life. But for the last few years here at University Lutheran, we've chosen the pattern of following the week's events, beginning with Palm Sunday today, and then having a 7 p.m. service on Monday, Thursday, on Thursday, followed by a 7 p.m. service on Good Friday, and then our Easter worship schedule next Sunday. I believe there might even be a couple congregations in the community. I know Holy Trinity is offering the Easter vigil on Saturday night for those who might want to participate. And although we know what lies ahead, both the tragedy and the triumph, I found it quite meaningful when I gather for worship for each special worship service, even years before I became a pastor. And I can assure you that if you participate, either in person or online, for the special services this week, you too will experience a deeper connection with God during this, week's, or during this year's Holy Week. Today's gospel has Jesus and his disciples in the proximity of Jerusalem for the Passover festival, a festival that would draw huge crowds from the surrounding countryside and regions as Jews throughout the Roman Empire would make their pilgrimage to the holy city to get some sense of the magnitude, maybe you saw the images from Vatican City of Palm Sunday worship services there, or Muslims participating in the pilgrimage to Mecca, or in terms of crowd size and closer to home, yesterday's Tiger fans returning for the spring game. The city of Clemson has about 20,000 full-time residents, but on game days in the fall, it swells into the millions. Well, at least traffic feels that way. But we know it's way more than 100,000, but it's just based on stadium capacity and tailgating. So it's not hard to imagine the population in Jerusalem swelling by fivefold or maybe even tenfold during the celebration, the celebration that commemorates their liberation from the hands of the Egyptians, which made it a ripe time for the crowds to be stirred up Remember, the Romans are occupying the Palestinian region. The Jewish people have some freedoms for practicing their religion, but only insofar as it does not threaten the Pax Romana, the peace that Rome has brought through violent conquest. An empire where it's estimated that between a third to a half the population is enslaved. In this Palm Sunday event, of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, as most headings read in the Bible, we have a contrast between two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the empire of Rome. As I mentioned, the children's message for the people of the Jewish faith, they could see before them the living out of the prophecy from the book of Zechariah, where it is written, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion, Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Jesus riding on the back of a donkey as people toss their cloaks to the ground and yank palm branches off the surrounding trees, this is no ordinary parade. There is a great expectant promissory component to it if you are familiar with the Jewish scripture and also a subversive quality to it by staging this parade around the Passover, the one major festival of the year that could really inflame passions among the occupied Jews yearning for freedom, which is why the Roman governor at that time, Pontius Pilate, would make sure to be in Jerusalem to enforce the Pax Romana, 
trading in the comfort and the amenities of his seaside residence in Caesarea Maritima, which is on the Mediterranean Sea. It's a gorgeous setting, and the building foundations are still visible today. He would instead be in dusty Jerusalem, in uncomfortable proximity to the masses. So given the context, he would not be traveling into Jerusalem with a handful of escorts. No, the Roman governor of an occupied territory known to have zealots on the loose would have traveled in Roman style. His entourage, his procession, his parade would have shown forth the glory and might of the Roman Empire. Think of scenes from movies like Ben-Hur or Gladiator or the like. There would be military cavalry and marching soldiers horse-drawn chariots, banners blowing in the wind atop spears, and sunlight dancing off gleaming helmets and swords and breastplates. The message would be clear and unequivocal. Don't mess with Rome. Pilate's procession from the west needed to cover about 60 miles from the coast to the city, and Jesus' procession from the east simply needed to wind down the Mount of Olives, across the Kidron Valley, and up the very manageable slope to Jerusalem. And this is the clear juxtaposition, the contrasting vision of two appositional kingdoms. Jesus sitting atop a small donkey, think donkey from the movie Shrek, with followers laying down their cloaks and spreading branches, unarmed, except for their voices proclaiming, blessed is the king, who comes in the name of the Lord. To the Gentile Romans, it would be like, now wait a minute, did you say king? That guy atop the ridiculously small beast of burden, a king? Did you hear about the procession our guy has? <laughs> the most powerful war horses and chariots, precision troops who have conquered peoples from the lands far and wide. This is the great contrast between the kings of this earth and the kingdom or reign of God. One, a kingdom based on conquest and sustained through the blood, sweat, and tears of enslaved people. And the other, an invitation from Jesus to come and see, to follow him. Do you remember Jesus' first public words recorded in the Gospel of Luke? He was in his hometown of Nazareth in the synagogue, and quoting from the prophet Isaiah, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And for three years, that is what Jesus has been doing. As the Roman Empire continued to do its thing, Jesus was doing his. And as an aside, which kingdom is still around today? How many followers of Caesar Augustus or Pontius Pilate have you ever bumped into? The contrast between the two kingdoms couldn't be more dramatic as Pilate marches into Jerusalem through its gate on one side of the city, displaying all the muscle and might of the empire, and Jesus and his followers coming in from the other side not even menacing enough to activate the Roman soldiers who are garrisoned at the Roman fortress Antonio that's right adjacent to the Temple Mount. But this juxtaposition of two kingdoms is not frozen in time in the first century. Tragically, we see it repeated over and over again as despots and dictators greedy for more land, more resources, seeking to fill a bottomless hole in their own soul, inflict violence on others, ordinary people in villages and cities. Sometimes these tyrants are even actively abetted by religious authorities, like the current patriarch of the Russian Orthodox Church's support of Vladimir Putin. But Jesus' way, offers us an alternative. Love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus' way challenges us. Pray for those who persecute you. Jesus' way can confound us. Love your enemies. 
this is what Jesus taught. And more importantly, this is what Jesus did, as we will vividly recall throughout this coming Holy Week. I still have many unanswered questions about whether Jesus would ever sanction any use of violence. I know we as humans have come up with a just war theory. And I know that great theologians and pastors like Dietrich Bonhoeffer left behind complete pacifism when facing the evil of Nazism in Germany. It seems to me that accepting violence against oneself is one thing, but standing idly by if you could help someone else, that seems to fall short of loving my neighbor. Like I said, I have many questions. What I do know is that to the best of our abilities and by the grace of God, the way of Jesus is the way that we have embraced as we seek to live out our baptismal covenant, to actively participate in a community of faith, to read scripture and share in the Lord's Supper, to serve others following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. To follow Jesus will mean steering away from the false idols of other empires, those that use power to coerce and subjugate others. We follow the Prince of Peace who rode into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. We follow the God who calls us to look after the widow, the orphan, and the alien in our midst, those who are most vulnerable to being abused and taken advantage of in society. We follow Jesus who said that the two greatest commands are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. This week, as we pray, read, and meditate on the meaning of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, may God's love so fill our hearts that this love spills over in our words and in our actions to our neighbors who are both near and far. Amen. Please stand as you are able and let us profess our faith together using the Apostles' Creed on page 9. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, sent to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Hear our prayer, O Lord. We pray for the church called to follow Jesus in the way of the cross. Make us unflinching servants of the gospel. Deliver us from hardship as we confront the forces of injustice and practice radical compassion. Merciful God, hear our prayer. For the earth and all its inhabitants, created in love, train us to recognize your divine goodness in the world around us. Rouse us in a reverence for creation that we take greater care of its resources. Merciful God, hear our prayer. For those in positions of authority called to lead with integrity and compassion, supply them with courage and vulnerability when challenged with new ideas. Deliver them from fears that limit imagination and impedes just justice. Merciful God, hear our prayer. For those who suffer, waiting expectantly for mercy and consolation, accompany those who feel abandoned or betrayed, 
defend those who are wrongly accused, and embrace those who are incarcerated or detained. Bless those who are in despair, burdened by war, an ongoing pandemic, and other disasters in their lives. Heal those who are ill, especially Anita, Abby, Ed, Ben, Marie, Barbara, Carol, Karen, Jimmy, Martha, Nancy, Alton, Scott, Greg, Gail, Pat, Jack, Rosalind, Tony, Randy, Joyce, Margaret, John, Mona, Jack, and others we name now in our hearts and on our lips. Merciful God, hear our prayer. For Christians around the world, preparing this week to journey with Jesus to the cross, reveal to us once again the earth-shaking power of humble service, unmerited forgiveness, and sacrificial love. Lead us all from death to life. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Other prayer petitions are now welcomed. We remember those who have died, who were commended into your hands. Remember us when you come into your kingdom and prepare a place for us, for each of us with you in paradise. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, and on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's share that peace with one another now. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and the resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life, 
O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. With your saints and all of your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We'll celebrate this sacrament of Holy Communion now. I'll come first with the bread. Uh, and if you'd rather have a gluten-free wafer, just let me know. Uh, Cheryl will come with wine. If you'd rather have wine, uh, grape juice instead of wine, please just raise your index finger like this. And if you come up and you'd rather receive a blessing than the elements this morning, just cross your arms over your chest like this. Uh, as you come up row by row, uh, everybody on my left can come on this side of the altar. Everybody on my right can come on this side of the altar. And if you're celebrating at home online, uh, as you pass a plate, the words are, this is the body of Christ given or broken for you. And as you pass a cup, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. But this is Christ's table and all are welcome here.
blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. stand as you're able to receive these final blessings. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Amen. You are children of God anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen.